in light of the current public health emergency that's going on, I will be offering telemedicine video conferencing services via a HIPAA compliant platform. This will be offered on a case by case basis. Steroids and the immune system, corticosteroids versus anabolic steroids. This is very important times today. This content in this video is going to be hopefully very helpful for people with the current public health issue going on in our country and around the world. I like to discuss steroids generally on your immune system. This is an evidence-based presentation. There are two types of steroids known to medicine. One is corticosteroids and the other obviously is anabolic steroids. Please stay with me on this. Number one, corticosteroids produced in the adrenal gland, cortisol. It's your natural corticosteroid. Um, it's very necessary naturally for you and its actions regulate inflammation blood pressure, maintenance and blood glucose levels, and metabolism overall, circadian rhythm and sleep-wake cycle across the CNS that has great effects on mood. And for this presentation, we will focus on the corticosteroid effects and regulation on immunologic function uh, via limiting inflammation both natural cortisol and we'll talk about the medicines that in the medical world we use to have effects on your body and how it will affect your immune system that we know very well. Immunologic mechanisms and how the cortisol will be affecting your body's response to injury and infections and how it does that secondary to infections both viral bacterial and of course there are fungal and parasitic infections and your cortisol levels essentially naturally from your adrenal glands maintain balance and try to keep down what's happening in your body's immune system naturally as it responds to infections it keeps it in check. Now, let's move on to medical use of corticosteroids. It's all about the receptors, glucocorticoid receptor stimulation. We have developed over the last hundred years or so, well-known medicines, prednisone, methylprednisolone, uh, cortisone. Okay, so people know that from pills, injections, and creams. Widely used corticosteroids, mild infections on the skin, dermatitis, rashes, swelling, allergic reactions, both mild and severe. <clears throat> poison ivy, for an example, people know. Severe poison ivy. I give patients, depending on case by case, a taper of real prednisone. Asthma. We know there's inhaled steroids. We know that there's, of course, pill and IV steroids we use in the hospital for pulmonary situations. Severe coughs, doctors will give a taper or a pulse of cortical steroids to uh, tone down and to limit severe cough, again, respiratory. Autoimmune diseases, rheumatoid arthritis, classically known we have to use steroids, lupus, inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's disease, ulcer of colitis, to name many. And as an internist, I have used these uh, regularly. Again, allergic reactions. Transplantation patients have to have a degree of rejection, protection uh, against their own immune system. We use prednisone for this, not to mention a host of other uh, anti-rejection drugs, very complicated. Patients on corticosteroids are considered to be immunosuppressed. This is such a worrisome 
group of people, if you're immune suppressed because you're getting hit with chemotherapy or you have rheumatoid arthritis or any of these conditions I mentioned and you're on corticosteroids, you're going to have to be so careful for even common colds, not to mention the flu and catching it from people. You could imagine today what we're concerned for in people in clinics, in nursing homes, and hospitals for what's going on right now. Now, the medicines, we have to take the good with the bad. So as we're modulating your immune system with these steroids, these are cortical steroids, we're always balancing the good with the bad. That's the first part of the presentation. Now we compare to anabolic androgenic steroids because these are all base steroid features molecularly. <clears throat> your body, the man's body, produces testosterone, which is the base natural uh, steroid. And now we could talk about anabolic androgenic steroids and the receptor is the androgen receptor. Where is that receptor? Skeletal muscle. Everyone knows this. Also in the CNS and the prostate. Actually endothelial tissue all through the cardiac system in the endothelial bed in the arteries and in the myocardial tissue itself. Now, on the immune system, very controversial. I've done my research on this. So the consideration is cortical steroids are immunosuppressive, going to be very dangerous for people uh, as we make their immune systems suppressed and they are going to be uh, at risk of uh, catching infections, even a common cold again in the flu, and they could suffer a spiral and they can die from pulmonary complications, overwhelming sepsis. Anabolic steroids, super physiologic doses definitely show in animal models to have immunosuppressive um, problems where the animals are become immunosuppressed and they could get hurt, sick, and die. Now, in human studies, there's no conclusive data, no conclusive data. Let me talk about this. So this is anecdotal now. I have to jump to anecdotal data as I've cared for thousands and thousands of men using anabolic steroids from testosterone levels up until super physiologic grams and grams of anabolic steroids, multiple steroids concomitantly and what the effect is. Now, apart from the cardiac effects and the kidney damaging effects and the CNS and the depression and the withdrawal issues, it's amazing to me that men that do steroids just globally across the board really do not, in my opinion, suffer immunosuppressiveness, if you will, to the extent that they get more colds or they suffer flu-like symptoms more. This is absolutely incredible, and if you look at all the data, they'll support that. Now, we have to be very, very careful with this. I've seen professional bodybuilders and some of the coaches currently saying, uh, making statements for people to be careful. Of course, if you're using a lot of drugs, obviously, anabolic steroids with other drugs, and you're limiting your diet significantly, that's naturally, you're going to imagine that someone's in a weakened state and they're going to be susceptible to getting um, any disease, uh, communicable disease, either a flu or a common cold could be worse. So that's definitely a warning, but it's really amazing to me that men that use steroids for decades and decades and decades, say moderate anabolic steroid use for what that is, they would not use it if they were picking up more colds and flus and getting sick. We just don't see that. Please bring comments now. Have you gotten sick when you did steroids? Has it affected you? Have you been in the hospital? Has a flu gotten worse? Did you get more colds, more skin infections, apart from the injections? Please let us know because my suspicion is that, that there's an anabolic receptor and then there's a corticoid receptor and there's specificity on these. I assume there is. Apart, again, in the animal studies, it looks like there's an overlap, but I don't think there's an overlap here. And if there is, um, it's going to take quite a great amount, and we'd like to know that, for immune suppression to occur from anabolic steroids.
and there are no studies, and I'd like to, of course, in the future, um, become more involved with that, apart from my research on how steroids affect a man's central nervous system with withdrawal symptoms, and I'm always interested in the cardiac artery, the heart, and the heart failure aspects in the renal, because I'm an internist. So please, please, during these times, stay healthy. If you're on steroids, you have to reach out to an expert because other health issues of your heart and your kidney, other issues, you could get an infection. And if you have to go to a hospital to get treated, it's going to be possible the hospital around you is going to be overwhelmed with what's going on. So please be careful. Get rest. If you're on anabolic steroids, do not come off without an expert. You, ha you could suffer withdrawal. It could be depressive symptoms. Be very careful. Please stay safe and try to stay very happy and try to work with each other with more social distancing. Please try to reach out. We love telemedicine. We're going to be all using that more. And I'd like to, again, get great positive comments on this channel about how people are getting through this current pandemic and how we could really help support each other, not to mention this huge group of people that use illicit drugs and recreational steroid users, not to mention professional. I'd like to hear it in great, great comments going. I really hope this helps. Thank you so much.